Hello, I'm making this video for my friends over at Crank who had who's considering buying this uh, Pico scope, and he's just wondering about the sample rate and everything like that. Now, to put you in the picture, I'm not an expert at, P uh, at scopes, but uh, as far as I can make out, uh, I think maybe one of the things you're meaning was see this figure up here. When I'm let me start this waveform so you can see that counts up to 32 and then it stops counting anymore but what's actually happening the scope is not st has not stopped counting it's just like frame one let's see frame see it was frame one it disappears so that see that first frame as soon as you get to 32 the thing still keeps counting and it knocks the first frame off and then it goes and then it knocks the second frame off the third frame so if this is what you're asking, you can actually increase this limit. You can go up to here, you can go into Tools, you can go into Preferences, and you can increase this. So I'd say a good balance would be 50. So you just click Apply and hit OK. So we can start the sample thing going again, and you can see this time it counts up to 50 before it starts knocking the first scope captures off and you can pause that at any time. So maybe that's what you're referring to. The other thing I thought you maybe were referring to was a, I think it said memory. Let me see, well, let's go to the, the web page. Because well, I think you said you were uh, considering, was it this one? Memory 32 mega samples. <laughs> now I'm not actually sure what that means. I know the bandwidth is how quick the signal is uh, on the for your scope but to be honest on cars they're not really that fast maybe in your cars are with flex ray and that kind of thing but uh, cranking cam and that kind of thing they're, in terms of electronic industry they're real slow signals but i think you had talked about buying the the 2206b model now that looks quite good because i was seeing there uh, you can see it on their own web page you can actually you can decode and then you can, you can decode flex ray, you can see that there. And you can, oh, there's the, there's the phone. We're we'll back there now. Sorry about that, that's me back. As I was saying, this one allows you to decode eh, flex ray, and you can also do can bus and everything like that. So there's a wee video in there, you can watch that. Eh, I've never actually used that, but I see it's only for that model you're referring to there, the B model. It wouldn't even work on the A model that I have, so that'd be something I'd be quite interested in. But what I was going to say, there's a, there's a big step up in price here. It's two four nine, but I don't know. It's up to yourself. <laughs> it's your money. But uh, I think f for what I'm wanting uh, to do with scopes, this this wee model's uh, more than enough. So I th so thought as the other thing you you were maybe were referring to was the quality signal that you receive so let's go to this so back to this signal again so you can see that my sample rate is at 100 kilo samples so say are uh, up to time now yeah, let me see let's go a uh, 200 with that uh, that'll do let's let this run so you can see that's running along the screen that's giving me two seconds let's up it again and you can see the difference there uh, there's a 10 second, right? So you can see the waveform goes up and down and everything like that. So it's not really capturing it properly. And you can see that when you go in in the waveform. So let's look at this bit here. And look this bit there again. And let's go in again. See where we want to get into this bit here. So you can see the sample rate is not high enough because it's, no, it's not capturing the proper AC sine wave. That should be nice and smooth at the bottom there. But because it's got a low sample rate, well, what you can do and it says this we think can go up to 100 mega samples i'm not sure but you can up up this see let's just go for one and you'll notice the difference here so we'll come back out we'll let this run and let's stop that and we'll go in take a portion of the signal go in again and go in again now you can see that's that's a lovely signal that because we up the sample rate now it says on that website, I'm sure it does. Let's see, this this is the one I've got. Sample rate 100 mega samples. But uh, I know once you get you up the sample rate, it's not in real time, it's not live, it's it'd be well behind time because it's trying to work that out. But 
To be honest, when I've looked at these uh, settings within the automotive picoscope, they're all usually about one mega sample, so this thing uh, looks fine to me. But I'm trying to think if there was anything else I could tell you about this scope. But uh, I think that's all at the moment, my friend. So if you have any other questions or anything I've failed to answer, you can get back to me. But for what I'm looking for, oh, that was what I was going to say. Within your situation within a workshop, a picoscope would be ideal because you're static and you can keep it set up. It's not so good for myself who goes and helps friends and neighbours where the, the virus, I mean, you do hate the virus once you use this because this is brilliant. The virus, you've got to have a low time scale and then you can zoom out to see it. But it's handy for me because it's quite portable and a laptop's a wee bit bulky and it's a wee bit, uh, what do you call it, a pest to set up. But, uh, oh yeah, picoscope is really good. Although, if you have a newer virus, you can put picoscope on that, but I've not got that. No, <laughs> nor am I willing to spend the money, especially when that little Autel tool can do far more bi-directionally than what a uh, Snap-on can do and it's a lot less money. Anyway, hope that helps. Cheers, my friend. Bye-bye.